Okay, let's get to another one in the Seven Caillou series. This one's called Don't Give Me Five. In this kata, you get the start number and the end number of a region and should return the count of all numbers except numbers with a five in it. The start and the end number are both inclusive. So for example, note if you get the input one comma nine, you just list the integers one through nine and the result is eight because you'll notice of course between four and six there's nothing the five was taken out so whereas you would have nine integers in that range inclusive you removed one because it was a five and you can look over this one for four and 17 as well you'll notice five is gone and 15 is gone and so you only get the result of 12. The result may contain fives. Not sure what they mean by that. We said, don't give me five. Uh, the start number will always be smaller than the end number. That's nice. Normally you could check that and swap them and it doesn't hurt to do that if you want, just for good practice. Both numbers can also be negative. I'm very curious for your solutions and the way you solve it. Yeah, maybe some of you will find an easy, pure mathematics solution. Uh, that's not what I'll be showing here, but it'll be easy. Have fun coding it, and please don't forget to vote and rank. Okay, we're good. So we come over, they've got this method stubbed out for us. Don't give me five. So I'm going to use some link methods to solve this uh, in a pretty concise way. But you know the drill, pause the video, please give an honest attempt first, and then resume when you're ready. So for me, solving this problem is going to come down to three basic steps. Step one, generate the range of integers based on the input, right? So we saw that with one nine, Imagine to start, it would have the five in it. Just list out all the integers. That's what step one is saying. List them all out, whether they're five, they have a five in it or not. Uh, step two then, after that, filter out the fives, right? And then for step three, what does our contract say? It says they're expecting an integer back from us. And from the description, we know this should represent the count of numbers that are not five or, or don't have. I shouldn't say just five because remember we threw 15 out. So any, any number that doesn't contain a five. So you wouldn't want a number like 537 either that would fail. So return. But, but once you have this list of integers, you filter out the fives, you can simply return the count of remaining integers. That's in a nutshell what this solution will, will boil down to. And it doesn't hurt to kind of write this out so you can see it pretty easily. So step one, how do we get a range? Well, we've done this a number of times, right? We know enumerable has a range class. And we're already starting to get into link, so we better bring that in before we get yelled at, right, when we try to run. And always consult your docs. Enumerable range, right? It takes a start number and a count. So it, if you didn't look at the documentation, you may have thought you just list the start number and end number, but that obviously won't work the same. They want the start number and the count, and you can calculate the count if you know the start and the end. So let's do that. Enumerable range, start, and the count would be end, minus start plus one, right? And maybe you started with n minus start, that's fine. Just do some examples in your head to, if this doesn't make sense. Consider the range two to seven, right? Count them all out on your fingers. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got six fingers up, right? And if I look at seven minus two, that's only five, right? So plus one, and you can do that with other examples until you're convinced it's accurate. Okay, so just with this statement here, right, I've got this collection of 
just integers. They may have fives in them or not, but we have the whole range, the inclusive range of numbers. We fulfilled step one of the algorithm here. That's good. Step two, filter out the fives. So hopefully with the link methods, we've done enough of these where when you see that word filter, it points you toward a certain method. And you can look through the list here. See, I'm under methods right now for enumerable. We were on range, but where? Where elements fulfill a certain condition, right? This predicate, that's just a fancy word, you know, for a Boolean, whether something's true or not, meets a condition. So I'm going to use where. We should have seen this by now, but as always, read the as much of the documentation as you like. Where? And then we're going to pass a function as a lambda that will define the condition. And what is our condition? Well, we want the integers to pass that don't, whose digits don't contain any fives in them, right? So I'm going to use, I'll use num for my variable name. Remember with lambdas, you list your parameters first. There's only one here, so I only have one, but you'd comma separate if you had more. And then what you want to do, this where will take care of feeding each one of these numbers in the range. It's going to feed them one at a time as the num value here, the, the num parameter. And it will run whatever logic we want to run on that. So what I'm going to do first is for me to check for fives, and, and you can look at some math magic if you want to do it a different way. I'm just going to turn it into a string, and then I'm going to look over all the characters in the string to see if any of them are a five character. That's how I'll achieve this. So I'll say num to string, right? And so what do we know about strings? We know that strings are actually a collection of characters, right? So if you think about it, what I have in here is another collection inside of a collection. And so this might bend your mind a little bit. That's okay. It's good, good for you. But just try to bear with me and think about it. But since I have a, co a collection here, I'm going to use another link method to go over all of the elements in this collection. So we're already kind of going through this collection, right? And then within each element in this collection is also a, a little mini collection, right? So I can use another link method on it. And for me, I want to make sure all characters meet my condition, which is that they're not a five, right? If any one fails, the whole integer is ruined, right? I could have one, you know, imagine some big number, one, nine, seven, six, two, four, and it can go on forever. But as soon as one of those digits is a five, it violates what the, the rules they set up for us. So to do that, you'll notice that the enumerable has an all method, and this will sort of scan the collection you're dealing with and pass true if every element uh, passes your condition. So hence the all, right? You got this any, which is very similar, but we'll just tell you if any element meets a condition. So if you wanted to think about it a different way, we could use any instead and check if any is a five and then sort of uh, ruin that element if it comes back with any. But I'm just going to use all here for the way that I have mine going. So all, I want to make sure all are not five, right? So now to use this all, we've got a collection of characters, which was the number converted into a string. So you can imagine a string like one, two, three, four. Remember, it's not an integer anymore. It's in double quotes. It's a string. It's just text characters. And when I'm dealing with characters, a typical variable name I like to use is ch for char, short for char. Okay, so all. And I want to say 
all of these chars are not equal to the number five, right? And if that's true, where will pass it? If this, if it's not true that all the characters are not equal to five, then where the where filter will, will block it out. And that's exactly what I want. And then we're ready for step three. You can simply return the count of the remaining integers. And we should have something handy. Hopefully you remember, if not, you know, you should be looking through this list often until you, you know all of these and then you've got them all in your toolbox. But there is a count. And so we could simply uh, call that to get the number of elements. Perfect. So I know this is running kind of long, but you one-liners might enjoy that it's all on one line. You could certainly break it up if you wanted to. So count, and I think that achieves what we want to do. So I'll test it out. Maybe I'd make sure I didn't do anything bad. Good, looks good. So at this point, if the link stuff was comfortable for you, you can bail out on this video. I'll do another one in case that's still a little um, not clear. We can just do another solution that isn't using all this link stuff crammed onto one line. We'll just use some old school uh, loops and variables. So if you're out here, thanks for watching. Otherwise, we'll go on to another solution. And we're just going to use the same algorithm, right? We'll do the same kind of thing. So um, I guess it's not quite the same algorithm. We'll, it'll be a little different, but what do we need here, right? Since we're not doing this all in one line, you can just make a list of integers and I'll call it non fives. And don't forget to initialize your list so you can use it. And then we're going to have to bring in system collections generic to use list, right? List isn't something we made up. It's something somebody else made up, Microsoft made up for us that we want to use. So good, we got non-5. So you can imagine now we're going to loop over the input less than, remember it was inclusive, so I'll go i is less than or equal to end. I'll increment i each time. So now we're going to go over the range basically and just kind of load up this list with numbers that don't contain the value 5. So how can we do that? Well, first thing, just like up here with the link, let's convert it to call it num text equals i to string, right? And with, I'll use the same strategy. I'll just make it a string look through all the characters char ch in num text right go now we're looping over each character in the string better make sure that none of them are fives right so if ch equal to the character five remember for characters that they're single quotes right strings are double quotes characters are single that means a character if char equals five, then Houston, we have a problem, right? We don't want that in our list. So what I'll do here is I'll make a little flag. I'll say Boolean has five, and we'll just assume it's false for the to start. And then as we encounter a character, we will set that. And that's what we do here, right? If it equals five, we're gonna set our flag. Has five equals true. And then we can break out of the loop right even one five alone just invalidates the whole thing right so you know if a number starts with a five you don't need to read 20 more digits right that'd just be a waste you'd read 20 more digits just to fail anyway so i'm saying break and break breaks out of the containing structure break so it'll apply to this for each and not the outer for loop it gets you out of the for each loop and then it's a matter of checking if our flag was set or not. If not has five, right, then we know it's safe to add to our list. Um, I think we call it non-fives, add i. 
and then once we've broken out of our for loop there, we'll be able to simply return the size of the list. Should have all the return on fives dot, I think it's count, we'll find out. So let me make sure I commented out my, yep, I did. Um, let's go through this. And then of course, if a five isn't found, it just keeps looping through each character has five was never set, so it'll be false, that's good, and then it gets added. If it did hit a five, this flag will be true, and it will skip over non-fives add. So let's test this and see if we get anything here. Looks good, lots of green. I remember the test though only has a few tests. You wanna run the attempt to make sure everything worked. And it looks good. I'm gonna go back, I like the one line solution a lot better here. So you could submit whatever you like. Let's get rid of this. And I better run the full suite on my one liner. I'll get rid of my comments. Okay. And let's hit attempt again. Make sure that one works too. Looks good, we're ready to submit. So yeah, go ahead and submit. Look through the answers, probably someone used some math magic to do something where they didn't have to loop over a string like I did, and that's good. Range. Okay, yeah, contains is nice there. Kind of similar to what we did. Uh, they got count. Uh, in, in the middle here, we had it at the end. Times two string count. So yeah, they kind of set up a counter, right? A little counter outside here and loop over and increment as necessary. That's that's cool. That works. Yeah, similar kind of stuff going on here but and yeah if you didn't like how mine was strung out see how they uh, put it on new line some people think that's ugly some people think that looks nice so uh, style to your tastes or if you work on a team style to your team's taste but yeah go ahead and look through those all you like otherwise hit me up with questions and as usual I appreciate you watching Likes and subscribes are very appreciated as well. Thank you.